Ready? <clears throat> this is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned in to episode 17 of The Real Word. Nicole, nothing. Here we You've are. Got absolutely <laughs> nothing. I do the intro. You do a little like color. Oh, I do a little and then color. Then we go back, you know, well, like then we go I back mean... and forth. That's kind of like the thing. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna do some serious me. talk today. Yep. Are you cool with that? I'm good with it. <laughs> Getting really like really serious. Yeah. So, what do you think? Good topic. I think it's a great topic. Yeah, no, and I think. Are that we gonna share it with no, everybody? Go, yeah, share away. I'm gonna share, and we'll link this up. Uh, uh, Sam will link it up in whatever you're watching YouTube or SoundCloud, listening. The name of the article, Inman article. March 16th. March 16th. A couple days old. Super relevant here. Mm -hmm. FEMA underestimates flooding risk to millions of Americans per study. A new analysis finds that property at risk of flooding is double the current. FEMA risk and 41 million Americans could be impacted. Yeah. So initially, when you brought up the article, we're, we're in a water, we're in waterfront communities. We are so definitely like, in waterfront communities. Even if people in Connecticut think that they're in the mountains, they're in a mountains. Well, mountains of Connecticut. I guess I would, the vast hills. mountains <laughs> that we have. <laughs> Well, I think people think that because they're north that they're, yeah. they're not at risk of flooding, but sure. that's not true at all. Um, and it's funny, though, because I remember, um, I think it was 2013, FEMA did a remap. Was it 13 or was it 11? Yeah, it was in that time It frame. was sort of right around yep. that time. There was this huge remapping, and there were so many um, homes that were not in flood zones, all of a sudden got switched into flood zones. It was really serious around here it after was, Sandy. Right, yeah. Well, and it's funny, though, because everyone was, like, bitching and complaining, and I feel like um, as agents, we were just like, oh, like FEMA's just like looking to make their money back. So they're like throwing people into they're a flood zone. just doing their thing, man. And it's interesting because this article actually completely 100% contradicts that because it sounds like there's people that are not still in flood zones that are 100% at risk of being flooded. Yeah. And I know we, I, we've talked about it on the radio, I believe, where if you are not in a flood zone right now, right. you can get a flood policy. So my parents are the prime example because I've been advising them to do this. They're not oh, in a flood look zone. At you. Such they're, a good advisor. They're not in a flood zone currently. Get the policy now so that right. you can grandfather that policy over because right now it would be yeah. about six hundred and fifty dollars for them approximately. You would hope though, so again, I mean so the article goes over lots of different things. Hopefully they would still be allowed to do that because some policies right are now you well, my point is right now they can well yes not all policies can be um can be transferred so you want to make sure that you do get a policy that is that transferable. can be transferred yep. right because yeah. we do that a lot on properties that we sell right where the current homeowner has a policy that's much more affordable than what the new buyer would get on a new policy and that policy is now grandfathered over to the new buyer you have to be super mindful though too because i ran into a situation where the current owner of the home it was their primary residence and the buyers coming in it was a second home so there is i mean there are multiple layers here when it comes to flood policies and oh, insurance absolutely. in general so we're definitely not we're not trying to pretend like we know it all but i we're do not know, insurance agents no not at all maybe we should put that along like scrolling along the bottom but because I do, because again, you do run into a little bit of a situation when it comes to transferring policies if you're if it's a second home or a primary residence because there is a, a little bit of a of a cost differential differentiate differential di differential what are you differential cost differential. difference difference. There's a difference in cost. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of this gets brought to our attention after these big storms, like for us locally with Sandy, right, and then Harvey, obviously in Houston. And in Houston, there was about 41, some some number here, some ridiculous Crazy number. Uh, FEMA estimated that, uh, I wish I could find the number really quick for you, I can't. It was a crazy <laughs> amount of homes in that Houston area that were not in a flood zone that were impacted. Right. So that, and oh, here's the number here that I thought. Oh look, that you I just, thought, you eh, just, floated just, just, just like kind of floated into my vision here. This is a little bit different, but by some calculations, the current flooding represents the third 500-year flood in the Houston area in the past five years. 
So they had three, so it should be good for 1,500 years then, right? They, well, you would think. Get them right in a row. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I mean, and those, but those people that are in the, fi the X500 zone, they're not even required to have a policy. Correct. Yeah. And at times, yeah. 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 Usually you're not. So I, I think certainly Houston's going to remap. Look right. at their mapping. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, so I live in an 1875 home and I um, am in a flood zone, but because my home was built pre firm, I do get a lower rate. So there are obviously, but probably in those areas, you know, you're not talking about these old historic homes. I honestly also think that. Um, what will be interesting though too is because when you are in a flood zone if you do renovate a property there is a 50% rule too so I mean that could actually impact yep. you know these these 1970s homes that need some updating or some oh drastic... like all of a sudden you're in a you're in a you're on the the new flood zone right? right and you're just like trying to do a renovation yeah Ooh, if you go over that 50 percent rule i mean you're having to lift What's, if someone doesn't know the 50 percent rule okay so if you're in a flood zone and you want to renovate a home that is in a flood zone um you don't have to we um, call it the fema 50 50 rule like slang that's probably not like the appropriate no but it's but it but it sort of waters it down for the consumer because yep. it, it can get a little cumbersome so you're only able to renovate the home 50 percent of the assessed value now that's the assessed value of just the structure not like the land it's just just the structure so once you hit that 50 percent mark over the 50 percent mark you then have to follow the fema um, guideline which is like raising it out of the flood zone all that fun stuff so that's going to play a huge so some I people mean, like in community you know we've seen it a lot in, in communities that we're working in will opt to just literally tear the house down and build to fema standards right but i mean you think about a homeowner that you know is maybe, doesn't want to tear their house down just no, wants to do some a beautiful kitchen absolutely and, and, but like again they're in like a modest you know hundred fifty thousand dollar home um, that, you know, like they're just sort yeah. of getting by and there's some substantial renovations that they need to do or what have you or who the hell knows or maybe it's, it was left to them in a will and I mean that could really impact a lot of people. It, it was sort of like when the taxes along the shoreline all of a sudden went through the roof and like you were seeing like families like fleeing from like their, their family homes because they like the taxes just sort of, yep. it'll end up being probably the same sort of situation. So, so, so FEMA said basically 41 more million people yeah. could potentially potentially be impacted, meaning if they have a mortgage, they're going to be forced into this flood insurance. Right. The one... And don't just think that's coastal. There are plenty no, of absolutely. communities in this, even just in our state that are, you know, even near like the Hartford area, like that's so far away from the ocean that are absolutely 100% in flood zones. So just because you're not on the water, don't think that you're like... It did say that potentially... In this article, uh, you know, you add more people to the pool, maybe you can cap these. And they threw out the ten thousand dollar number as a cap. We've seen flood insurance get up as high as fifteen thousand right. uh, dollars, and, and so that's pretty ridiculous. So right. th having a cap on it would be nice, but there's going to be a lot of people that are like, "Oh, nothing's ever flooded here. If this floods, the whole world's flooding," type of thing, and right. they're not going to want to pay flood insurance. So forty-one million people impacted. Do you? W what's your the ultimate question is, do you think this is a racket or do you think this is like legit that? Well, I think it's a big old flipping racket. Um, but I do. I mean, you obviously can't deny the things that are happening, though. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's been well, some crazy devastation. People are losing their homes. Three 500 year floods in yeah, the last three I mean, years it could, it in Houston. Just, and it's but it's like devastating right. towns and homes and people's futures and like. I guess I also don't blame the fact that FEMA needs to start doing these things to even just protect the consumer. Like as a homeowner, I guess I would, as much as I don't want to pay a flood policy, I would much rather pay that, you know, $2,500 policy if there was ever a potential for me to be flooded so that if there is devastation, my family isn't, you know, sort of reaping the horribleness of that for 15, it's, 20 years. It's definitely a racket. They're definitely going to make racket. up for these storms one way or another. They're always going to make up for the storms. I would. That's an interesting twist. I mean, maybe this is a whole like hoaxy thing to get some money. The, yeah, it could be. Jeez. Mm. 
I Absolutely. Think. Insurance companies? Come on. I hear let's, you. I mean, I hear you. All my insurance peeps, I love you, but I hear you. let's face the facts. Well, you just have to start buying your homes with cash. So start stockpiling yeah. your money. Because obviously you won't, if you're not, if you're not doing a mortgage, this yeah. is all sort of a moot point um, in terms of being required to carry flood. But the other big piece of advice I would give you, the same advice I'm giving my parents right now, I hope they actually did it because we, we talked about this a while ago. Your mom was just here. We should... We should have forced should have her on her. the video and asked her. Yeah. Um, Ma. Ma, the meatloaf. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, is if you're in a waterfront community and you aren't required flood insurance right now, I would just get it. Get the preferred risk. FEMA for preferred risk is somewhere around $650, that lower yeah. end number. And now you have, if you can transfer that, talk to your insurance agent. If you can transfer that to another buyer, that could in five years become very, very valuable Absolutely. in your sales. Because I believe that uh, properties in waterfront communities that have elevation, that have a view over um, the water and not necessarily like where you're just walking out and you're, you're yeah. at the same level Or maybe it's uh, sort of like a city, gift. Like you're I think gifting, those properties go up in value. Maybe a gift too. Like a seller's gift to a buyer, you know, instead of doing like oh. a home warranty or something. It's, it's, it's like brilliant. It's a gift and it's just maintaining your value because think about it. If you have $10,000, if you're at the max, you're $10,000 in flood insurance or you're grandfathering over a $650 uh, a year policy and, and somebody's looking at two comparable homes on the water, one has 10000 one has 650 I'm going to live there 10 years. Well, geez, I'm taking, I don't know, $100,000 off of the value of this home right. in comparison to that one. Right. So Yeah, buying power. Certainly look at that, although it is a racket. It's a super racket. I'm curious what's going on. Like people are fighting though in like their communities. Like if you're an insurance guy, Absolutely. like what do you think is going to happen? Absolutely. If you Or tag somebody that's in insurance uh, to this video. Love to hear their two cents. I'm certain we're missing some stuff. We're going over the uh, very macro part of this article but yeah not, you know and an insurance agent dig in yeah no i'm curious yeah just awesome to, maybe you like were in a flood zone now you are in a flood zone that's the <laughs> racket that's oh, a racket are we swearing on this that's okay we're swearing on this oh it's, just do it's the right at the end if you heard that swear woo. drop us a comment i think last time i got a i got a whistle right it was like a woo yeah yeah <laughs> we'll <laughs> whistle it you drop a little comment if you heard oh, that boy. one awesome let us know what you think fema 41 million people We'll see you guys next time on The Real Word, or maybe it'll be The Racket. Maybe it will be a racket.